Hey, and welcome to the launch Growth University SEO for Founders uh, module, the course. Uh, in this quick intro video, what I really wanted to do is just introduce you to the concepts we'll be covering in the course, what things we'll be going over so that you're aware of what's coming up and give you a little bit of an intro just in terms of what SEO is and the tools that I think you'll need as a prerequisite if you're gonna pass through this uh, complete course set uh, and come out the other end with a better overall well-rounded understanding of what SEO is, how to do SEO and what things you should be looking for and paying attention to as a founder looking to grow the organic search presence of your website and business. So, so coming up here, we've got a number of modules broken down, which I'm sure you've seen already, but we have number one is keywords. Number two, we go through links. Number three, we look at content. Number four, technical and structure around SEO. So technical SEO and the structure of your website. And number five is measurement. So kick off really quickly, I'll give you a, a very fast overview of some of these things so you can uh, sort of get excited maybe and just get aware of what's coming up here. We've got keyword criteria. When we cover off keywords, we're gonna be looking at why you should choose a certain keyword. What makes it a good keyword versus a bad keyword? And I give you a criteria to break that down so that whenever you're going and doing keyword research, you're deciding what keyword to put to what page, what you should be doing, you're making informed decisions that are actually going to have an SEO impact. Keywords really are the fundamental uh, start point of almost all SEO and you really want to make sure you get this right. So what I've done here is really try to make sure that you have the tools available to both A, choose good keywords, but keep track of things using the keyword research sheet, which I will provide uh, to grow with you so that you can um, use it also. I'm going to show you how to find those keywords, obviously, and how to steal competitors' keywords so that you, uh, you, know, you can be competitive in the space that you're in. Module two, we look at links. So we look at internal and external links, two different types. Uh, we also look at quantity versus quality in links. There's a lot of conversation generally around um, links being this big thing for SEO and they really were a big thing, still are a big part of SEO. Um, but you need to be aware of what's good versus bad in terms of links and, and what exact links you should be chasing or what you shouldn't be chasing and be very wary of. And I also run you through some link building strategies to let you know how you go about doing that, how you chase those links once you have qualified what's good versus bad. Number three, we look at content. So what content should you write? We cover that off. We look at good versus bad uh, on-page SEO. Uh, good versus bad, sorry, content. And then we look at on-page SEO. A little typo there for me. Uh, so, so what I want you to understand in this module is what content should be written on the site, what types of content should go on the site. Uh, as well as what good content versus bad content looks like in terms of Google and SEO. Um, not, uh, now, now maybe clear, in terms of Google SEO, you can have great content in terms of the way it's designed or in the way it uh, reaches your audience and not all content is for SEO. But if you can marry the two, you're in a sweet spot and you're in the perfect world. And that's what most people are gonna try to do building. And I'm sure that's what you're gonna try and do also. And then finally, we look at on-page SEO and what that means and, and what that looks like on your website, whether it's for blog content or landing page content, it's very similar. So we go through the fundamentals of that so you can be aware of what, um, what that means and what that is and how to make sure you do it right. Uh, number four, technical SEO and structure. So we look at site structure and how that affects the way that Google crawls and sees your website and how that structure can actually really hinder or help your SEO. Uh, and then we go through and look at some common technical issues and the potential uh, ways to resolve those. Now, technical issues are really when you get into the weird SEO and generally outside of a, a sort of a SEO for founders beginner course. But what I have done here is provide you with some tools to be able to analyze or find those, give you some really broad um, ideas of how most of those will be solved. Uh, so that you can be equipped to solving the most common ones so that when you do need to go, maybe, or you do have a technical issue that might be above your head, you know it's not a basic one that you could have solved. So when you go to engage somebody else to help you, you know that you've ticked off the fundamentals. Those are all good. It's, you're going to them because it's a really a technical problem that you would need an expert on. Or potentially you're just at a point where it's worth getting an expert to come in. But I know as a founder and the founding team, generally you want to connect, you want to, take on and, and solve as much as you can or you grow, uh, firstly to understand, but also because you know time and resources are, are limited and you need to be able to sort of understand and push things in the right direction. And number five, we're looking at measurement. So how to measure SEO and what exactly to measure. So those are really broad. I keep this pretty broad in terms of what you should measure and how to measure it. What I wanna to communicate to you in this module, and I'm sure it'll be very clear when you do get to that is, hey, 
it's really easy to overcomplicate measurement for SEO. It's really easy to look at 700 different things. It's really easy to go really deep in the weeds of Google Analytics or Search Console or some rank tracker or something like that. But what you need to be aware of is you're looking for the bottom line things to indicate you're going the right direction as you're growing, right? It's founder in a founding team. You've got a lot to look at. You've got a lot to worry about. You want to make sure that you are actually measuring the things that are just going to give you the indicator of right direction, right direction. Once you actually get to a point where you've scaled, you can bring in people who can spend more time digging deeper into this. So that's what's coming up. Uh, moving into that, uh, here's some tools that I want to just quickly discuss and give you an idea of what I think is a prerequisite to go forward with this course. Uh, so four general types of tools, rank trackers, link tools, auditing tools, and report slash review tools, right? Now, the beauty is that uh, most of these things at least can be packaged into one thing. So uh, you can see here I've outlined rank trackers such as Ahrefs, SEMrush, and Moz. Those also have link and auditing tools bundled into it. And for that reason, I generally recommend that you would go ahead and look at purchasing one of those. Now, it's going to depend on what you prefer in terms of the UI, uh, the pricing, etc. My preference is Ahrefs, which I'm sure you'll hear many times within this course. But you know, as long as it does the job and you stick to that one, that's fine. Uh, what you've got to understand about this is that um, it's okay to use SEMrush or Moz if that's what you prefer. A lot of people, maybe like me, will say you have to use uh, one particular tool. You don't have to use one particular tool. What you do have to do, have is like a point of truth for the measurement that you're using. And if you just continue to use one tool um, for the first however many months, instead of jumping around and trying to find the perfect one, you'll have a better result than just, um, you know, you'll have a better result basically. <laughs> Um, so, so rank trackers are things that track the position of your keywords in Google. So where you rank for whatever keyword you're trying to rank for. Super vital for SEO. You want to make sure you've got that set up. Um, it's easy to do. Most of them pretty cheap. Somewhere between $70 and $100 a month uh, is uh, the price ranges of them. If you're very price sensitive, I think Moz um, may be the cheapest. You might have to re-review that. It's been a while since I've seen their pricing. SEMrush and Ahrefs are pretty close together. I think SEMrush might be slightly cheaper for the basic plan than Ahrefs, uh, but it's just up to you. Uh, link tools, the same as above, right? Link tools actually uh, tell you where links are coming from, what sites got what links from where, uh, what that looks like. It's really important part of SEO, so you need a tool to be able to analyze this and you need a tool to be able to analyze it for both gaining links for your site and analyzing competitors so you know where you are in terms of being competitive with them. Number three, auditing tools. So auditing tools crawl your website and just identify issues that you need to resolve. Now they are basically, uh, they're sort of like a dumb tool, right? You need to sort of know how to use them or what you're looking for to be able to use them at the best. Uh, however, they are important that you have the tools above this. Uh, number three here, Ahrefs, SEMrush and Moz all have those built in. Generally, if you have those, uh, one of those tools, you're going to have an auditing tool already. So. That's a way to do it. Alternatively, you have alternate, you have deep crawl or screaming frog and many others that you can use if you prefer to use those or you want to get more deeper and nitty gritty. Uh, but I would say that the best bundle is Ahrefs, SEMrush, or Moz, or one of those types of tools that has all this packaged together. And finally, reporting and review tools. We keep this really simple: Google Analytics and Google Search Console. Now, obviously, those are both free, provided by Google. You should have this set up. Uh, before you start this course, in my opinion. If you don't have it set up right now, you don't have to stop the entire course to go and set it up, but I would make it a priority to do this week. Uh, if you need someone to help you set that up, I'm sure there's someone with think growth you can do that, um, whether that be uh, someone else in there, someone you know, or even myself, who might be able to just reach out and say, hey, look, I can get this code inserted for you. It's a really simple setup. Um, most people can do it, especially if you have a WordPress, Squarespace, one of those CMS, you know, big CMS type sites, they provide spaces for you to do this, makes it really easy. Um, but I, I guarantee that uh, these are things that you're going to want to have as a minimum. Uh, otherwise, measuring, being effective in SEO is going to be extremely difficult. So last but not least, let's just go into what is SEO. Now, I don't want to spend too much time on this. If you're here, you're probably really aware generally what it is and that you need to do it and that it's beneficial. I just want to touch base really quickly on what it is uh, and just the main categories of it, just to give you sort of a fundamental understanding so that maybe if you need to communicate that to someone within your team, someone else, you can do that. So very broadly, SEO is just the art of making your website searchable, readable, findable by Google and your customers, right? So 
you want Google to be able to crawl through the web, see a link to your site, go to your website and be able to crawl all through your website and understand what's on it and what you do so that they can put you in their search results for the right types of keywords, right? So it needs to be findable in that sense um, by, your, by your customers, right? That's how you become findable. Um, and it needs to be readable, right? And by readable, I don't mean just like the text needs to be large. I mean like more, it needs to be tolerable to read, right? It needs to have uh, valuable content that your customers want to see. Um, so there's a very broad and very unperfect de definition of SEO, uh, but I think that communicates the main ideas. Um, the only other thing I want to cover is the three main categories of SEO. Now, you'll notice in the modules that we haven't really bucketed things this way. Um, however, I think it's really useful to think about it this way when you're looking at learning SEO. And the three main categories of SEO are content, links, and technical. So content is self-explanatory. We know the content that goes on your site and all the content on other people's site that might link to your site is going to be basically related to content, right? Links is the second one we sort of mentioned already. Links is important for SEO. You need links within your own website going to, you know, pages outside of your site, but also pages inside of your site. And you need links from other people who are linking to you. So, so links, if you uh, want to think about it in a way, an abstract way, links are almost like votes of confidence at Google. You want other people to link to you. That shows confidence in your website and your content. That's part of how you grow, um, how you uh, grow your website authority, but also how you move yourself up in Google search results. And the final one there is technical. Now, technical is a really broad bucket. It's everything from, say, broken pages to uh, whether your page is mobile friendly, whether your site loads fast. It's a really broad bucket that basically says, hey, this doesn't fit in anything else, it all sort of goes in here. So I think that when you're thinking about SEO and talking about SEO and maybe like what you're gonna do for SEO, it's really helpful to be like, okay, um, I know that we gotta create content, okay? Uh, we can do it go in the content module. You know, I know we need links, we can look at the link module. I know we need to fix our technical stuff, we can look at the technical module, right? So when you think about that and just remember those are the three main categories, most things you can intuitively put into one of those buckets. Um, and I think that sort of helps in giving you um, a very broad structure of what's important in SEO. All right, that's it for me from there. I really hope that uh, this course helps you and enjoy.